Thank you for staying with us. As the struggle for new Naira notes continues and tension mounts, there are fears that uh, there might be a breakdown of law and order in the country. Already, protests have been held in places like Ondo, Bini, and Ibadan, where properties belonging to commercial banks were destroyed. Nigerians are expressing anger over inability to access cash and are beginning to attack banks, with staff escaping for their safety. To avert any form of crisis, some state governors and civil society organizations have taken the matter to the courts. Governors Nasir El Rufai, Yahya Belu, and Belu Matawale have taken the federal government before the Supreme Court, seeking a declaration that the new policy being carried out by the Central Bank of Nigeria under the directive of President Muhammadu Buhari is not in compliance with the extant provisions of the Constitution and the CBN Act. A social political group has now joined in the legal battle. The Social Rehabilitation, Grace and Supportive Initiative has also dragged the CBN to a court, praying the court to compel the Apex Bank to extend the expiry date for the old Naira notes by six months. Meanwhile, Borneo State Governor Babaga Nazulum has threatened to revoke the land license of banks who hoard and sell the new Naira notes. Well, joining us from the U.S. is the convener of uh, the Social Rehabilitation, Grace and Supportive Initiative, Dr. Marin Dotti Oludari. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you very much for having me on this program. I believe you have been monitoring uh, developments with regards to the Naira redesign. And you have seen the protests that have erupted with regards to this matter, how things have developed, um, also leading up to the court cases with regards to this. One would question, how did we get to this point? Because this is not the first time Nigeria is, you know, redesigning the notes, the Naira notes in the country, but we have never seen the magnitude of crisis that we are witnessing now. Yes, thank you very much for that question. You know, so this is what I really want Nigerians to understand. The policy that the CBN is trying to do is essentially called demonetization, right? But behind the money is a value, a value that is earned from your hard work. Mm. The money is just a representation of that value that you have earned. Now, the CBN Act of 2007, onto which immediately got its powers to declare that a money is not uh, a currency seems to be legal and that gave him that power. But that same act, the section 20 of that act, subsection 3, said that upon expiration, the banks shall redeem the value, the face value of that currency upon demand. It did not say that the banks shall redeem it within the time frame placed by the CBN governor. He did not give any precondition. He said, sub, he said subject to subsection 22. But those subsection 22 only mention if you lost or misplaced your money or if your money is mutilated. And it even gave the bank an ad gratia leeway to, out of sympathy, take the destroyed money from you. So it made the LA when he said on November 23, 2022, that your money becomes useless. That's all. He lied to you. He lied to Nigeria. He never had the power to erase your value. Your value is your dignity. The President of the United States, Joe Biden, said something to Nigeria in his uh, uh, State of Union affair that his father told him that a job gets you more than a paycheck. It gets, your di gets you dignity. We have a fundamental human right to dignity. It is enshrined in our Constitution. By not giving us access to our money, he is denying us our fundamental right to dignity. And the MFLA does not have that power. The, country, the act, CBN Act is clear. It is crystal clear. There is no way where he can, he cannot put a time limit to it. He can decide that it's not a legal tender. A legal tender is essentially what a court recognizes as a means of payment of debt, that if offered extinguishes debt. That is what the legal tender is. And you can decide that. But the value, whenever you decide to take it to the bank, be it tomorrow or 2084, it cannot devalue it. I, I was in Nigeria over the, over the Christmas period. And when I left, I used the ATM severally. I never got a new note. This 
is 6,900 Naira. That who is with me. And a Messi lady does not have the power to take this value away from me. I studied for years. I worked hard. I broke my back. And a Messi lady will not make me go 6,900 Naira broke. He cannot. He does not have the power. And that is why we are taking him to court. And after we win this case, because it is a clear case, it is crystal clear, he, we are now still going to have a class action against him in person because he caught Nigeria on toward, on toward suffering. President, why did this thing happen in 1984? Maybe he is still preoccupied with 1984, but what he forgot was that in 1984, he had suspended the Constitution. So yes, he was ruling by fear. He could do it. But this is a constitutional republic. We are a democracy. Duwari and a Mesjele do not have the power to devalue us. They don't have the power to debase us. They don't have the power to deplatform us. They can change the currency. They have that much power. But our value, whenever we decide we want to redeem it, it shall be redeemed. That is what the constitution says. What? You can check it on the website of CBA. What you have said is interesting. You know, you use the word legal tender. That is an inanimate object. What of the human tender? Yes. Yes. And that is the value. That is the dignity. Does, does that, that not follow that, that in arguing this matter, that even in the, log, in the legal aspect of it, that the issue of human dignity and human rights has become, has become fundamental in this issue? That it's not just yes, about law yes, now, I mean, but it's about it's about it's about human rights. It is about human rights. It's about human dignity, sir. I saw a grown-up man, a grown-up man, keep himself naked in the bank. A grown-up man naming his seven-year-old, three-year-old children. Are we not suffering enough? Are we not suffering enough? A Mefele has destroyed Nigeria economy for the past eight years. We have inflation all over the world, but in Nigeria it is 10% inflation, 90% emaciation. If currency policy is the reason why everybody has run out of Nigeria today, when I was a first year medical student today, about a uh, FMC or what, sorry, uh, medical doctor, my salary was 180,000 naira. With that 180,000 naira, I could take 140,000 naira to buy a brand new iPhone that was being sold for $750, and I would still have 40,000 naira in my pocket to eat and drink. Right now, a first year medical uh, doctor is still earning about the same 180,000 naira. But if he wants to buy the same iPhone that costs about the same price, he will have to save four months of his salary. That is what a major lady to the Nigerian economy with his arbitrage uh, enabling policies. And that is why he is trying to scuttle this, uh, this, this election, because he knows that his crimes will be caught. He knows. It is, it is simple. Oh, he, he, he is the one that decides to get dollar and who does not get dollar. And if you buy dollar at the CBA rate and you go and sell it in the parallel market, you are going to make an automatic 75% profit. How many business will give you that in a whole year? That alone within 30 seconds or two minutes. He knows that there's only one candidate in this race that is not going to get in bed with him. And that is why he is trying to copy this, uh, this, this election. And that is why you see that other candidates are in cahoot. Peter Obi said when he was interviewed in, during the um, in Lagos Business School, when he was asked directly about this multiple injury, he said we should wait until we turn production into consumption, I mean consumption into production before we end dollar. When it is the policy, I could remember I read it back then when they were instituting the policy. Uh, it was Okonjo Wea that said it in a, in a this day interview that Standard & Poor's, Moody's, and a lot of all these um, investment banks withdrew over $55 billion from the Nigerian economy when they heard about that policy. The tenants, the basic tenants of a capitalist economy, of a free market economy, which is what if an SS wants to get in economics to learn, is free entry and free exit. For a basic they have told all investors in Nigeria that they can freely bring their money into Nigeria, but they cannot take it out, like he did with, with the Emirates flat, with the Emirates Airlines. He has destroyed the Nigerian economy. Now he's trying to destroy the Nigerian democracy. No, a Messi does not have that right. This is a constitutional republic. We have laws and we have gone to court. He does not have the right. He cannot destroy our democracy. We fought so hard for our democracy. People died. People died. 
to secure that democracy. People died, people like Kensarua, a lot of them. Kujira Tabiola, a lot of them. So the METNA will not destroy our democracy. And the Nigerian people should know that when you are suffering, when the government is trying to make out on forward on due pain on you, there was just one man that was fighting for you. The other two are telling you to go and enjoy it. Nigeria should remember when they go to equals. But a Betele has beaten more than he can chew, and we are going to burn him in the court. All, All right. Nigerians that have suffered on forward, on forward suffering will join a class action against man, and we are going to take money from him. All right. The but, all right, I'm claiming. Yeah, the, the point there is we, we, we can feel uh, the, the, the passion which you are expressing now, and a lot of Nigerians feel the same way, especially with what they're going through. However, the policy that uh, Mifile, uh, uh, acting as, as the, as the uh, governor of the central bank, is coming up with right now uh, doesn't seem to be his personal uh, uh, policy, but the policy of the government. In fact, the president has come out to say that he's in support of what is going on. So uh, do we blame the CBN governor for what's going on, or uh, we see it as the policy of the government? Actually, the president has acted like a puppet on a string, I don't know. But the president, I didn't hear him say, your money becomes useless at that top. Because the crux of this matter, the basis, if we have, if we want to be surgical and focus on and hone into the real problem, the basis is the fact that they have told people that their money becomes useless, so they cause panic. Whereas their money, based on the CBN Act of 2007, never became useless. No. They shall be redeemed by the bank upon demand. You are the one that will demand it. If you want to demand it now, yes. If you want to demand it tomorrow, yes. There was a situation, and I mean, because I had to go study this thing. This weaponization of demonetization is a Nazi Germany tactic. When doing the uh, German occupation of Netherlands, and Frank, uh, and Frank documented it in a diary that they demonetized to target the Jews. The India demonetized the 20, 2016. And in that 2016, before because they wanted to not be liable for the, for the currency after a while, they had to seek a cessation of liability on the ordinance in December 2016. And by March 2017, they made that cessation of liability ordinance an act. They got it from their parliament. A MFLA did not go and still get a cessation of liability. I did not print these notes. I did not print these notes. These notes were issued to me in an ATM machine, and they can check for the authenticity. I am in the United States. I am not going to lose this money. Whenever I decide to come back to Nigeria, my 6,900 Naira will always be redeemed, and I shall demand it. They cannot take my money away from me. I worked so hard for this. Right now, I am working just so I can hand this. And the Mephiel does not have the right. Buhari, Muhammad Buhari does not have the right to take this away from me. Buhari is still stuck in 1984. He probably never took off his military, military uniform, but he does not. We, and I would also want to apportion some blame to the senators. In 2019, when, it was, when the was in the military, the Mephiel had been a disaster from the get-go. I'm not sure. They, the Senate has the right to advise and consent. Why did they not advise? Why did they consent? The man was already a disaster. Now we is trying to destroy our democracy. This is the time where it's, uh, the election period in the world is the most volatile period in every nation. Even in the United States. We saw what happened in the United States in uh, January 6, 2001, when people invaded the, the capital. We saw what happened in Brazil, when people invaded their system of government. This is the most, the most volatile period in every economy, that, in every country that always leads to violence. And instead of the security agencies, the security agencies to be focusing on keeping the, the, the peace, instead of INEC to be focusing on running a smooth election, they are focusing on the Mephia LA single. They are focusing on the Mephia LA and whatever Bwari, I don't even think Bwari understands a lot of things actually, because he seems so aloof or something. I don't know, maybe he's in a vegetative uh, state right, or something. Uh, but, Dr. Oluda, the choice of they words... They can't take my money away from me. All right. Choice of words as it stands. Uh, INEC has also complained about this matter of the scarcity of the Naira as well as uh, the scarcity of fear that it might hamper 
its elections and all the elections and all of that. There's been complaints from every angle. And the government, the president, is going to hold a meeting with some of these stakeholders on Friday. Uh, the, the INEC chair will be there. Uh, the CBN governor will be there, as well as the inspector general of police and other members of government. I, I wonder how you see that meeting and what do you expect out of that meeting? Because the president had said uh, last week that we should give him seven days to make a decision. And I believe that that day, which is Friday, will be the decision that would be made. What do you want to see the government do? What should be top on the conversation that day? Would you want the government to revert the decision? Or would you want the government to, because there are those who are saying that uh, the government should go ahead and revert this decision, that the 10th should be the day that this old Naira note become a legal tender, and there are those who are saying, no, there should be an extension. Where do you stand? I stand on the basis of the law. First off, the law said that after seeking the government's con consent and giving due notice, by the CBN's performance itself, they have not given due notice because they don't have adequate amount of the, amount of Naira. The Naira should have been, the new Naira should have been circulating since I think November. I was in Nigeria with, between December and very early, early January, and I never got a, a new Naira note. So on the basis of the law, this order is null and void. It should be it should be taken out. I don't, but I will not put my hope in what they are what their meeting is going to come out of. I believe that we have a democracy and the when people have been, have been pushed to the world, we have the, you know, the judicial system to be the arbiter. So I am putting my own hope in the courts because that is where you can run to. They have not followed the law. A Mephile or Buari does not have the right to erase value. There is value behind this paper. This paper can be demonetized, but according to the law in Nigeria, whenever I demand for the value, for the face value of this $6,900, I'm sorry, Naira, it shall be redeemed. So far, it is not mutilated, and they are not. So I am putting my own faith in the court because we have actually filed for a motion ex parte for interim injunction so that the court can suspend this while we decide whether this, the legislators gave the CBN government. Because this, the CBN governor is not a law. He is operating, his power was, was given to him. This is democracy. We rule, we, it is ruled by consent. The people are the ones with the power. We have leased the power for a period of four years to our elected official. So it is that, that is the law. So the law that the Nigerian people have agreed to is that whenever we want, we shall be able to redeem our value, the face value of our currency. So the I believe maybe the people in Atto Rock and Co should go and call their lawyers and see and reinterpret the CBN Act of 2007. There is precedence for demonetization in Nigeria during the Jonathan regime when they were changing to the polymer. And it took about two years because this is such a, a, a humongous logistical uh, uh, undertaking. Even the United States military cannot take out more pop money within uh, the, the short period of time that they are saying. And, and when, you check, when you even think about mileage, gaining mileage, assuming there was adequate enough Naira, new Naira notes, since they started uh, distributing it, we can say they've been gaining mileage with people depositing and being able to take back their money in the new Naira notes. But I was in Nigeria a lot of weeks after they started circulating the new Naira notes, and not a single ATM dispensed a single a new Naira note to me. So they did not even give themselves adequate preparation. They did not even redesign the Naira. They only repainted it, essentially. So it is my own hope. Well, if maybe when they see that they don't have the legal basis, maybe when they see that they have actually broken the law, they will reverse the policy. But the hope for the common man lies in the courts, and that is why it is where we have gone, that they have not followed the constitution, that the value of 
a human being that he has earned by his work cannot be removed and that we, our dignities, is being assaulted. A man stripped himself naked in a banking hall because he could not feed his kids. A woman stripped herself naked in the banking hall. People are rioting. Nigerians are fighting each other. There is anarchy in the, in the, in the, in the state. Needless suffering. Needless suffering. You can't even eat sometimes without feeling guilty. For some of us that are, that, that are not within the country, we can't even eat food. Food without feeling guilty, like why why are we suffering? Why are we suffering ourselves this much? Is it necessary? Really? Is it necessary? Is it necessary? What were these people raised with love? Do they care about the Nigerians that are yeah. suffering, working hours just to get their own money? Yeah, um it's interesting what you have said. Um there is the human impulse, and then there's the law. There's this uh, uh, um, French uh, um, uh, writer and novelist who said that we can brave the human law, but we cannot resist the human, the natural ones, the natural law. You cannot. Uh, uh, and uh, even uh, Sigmund Freud said one of the problems with civilization is that we are trying to suppress, suppress human nature. How far can the law go to suppress people from taking the natural law into their hands? That is the, that is the issue. How much can Nigerians bear? Because the, the, um, the presidential candidate of uh, PDP, presidential candidate of uh, uh, Labour, they are involved in some kind of um, adjectival uh, contest. One is saying you should, it is, what you are going through is little inconvenience. The other one is saying what you are going through is some inconvenience. But is it inconvenience you are going through or suffering? Because the word inconvenience makes it look like uh, it's just a little thing. Eh? Uh, the it philosopher is... Herbert Marcuse said in his book, Errors and Civilization, that the tension of human beings is how civilization can suppress errors. That is the human, the human nature. Are we testing our human nature with this policy? Yes, and to the candidates that are saying some insensitivity, it is just highly insensitive of them. I mean, so, you know, some inconvenience, just highly insensitive of them. Like the man that stripped himself naked in the bank, you know, that is to Peter Obian article, just some inconvenience. To people who can't feed their children, to people who can't feed their children, that is just a bit of incon inc inconvenience to those two candidates. You see, it is it just shows what a rule under them is going to be. They, 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 this policy is tested. Nigerians are, I sometimes say we are the most docile people in the world. But you know, sometimes when a goat gets pushed to the wall, it pushes back. And this policy has not even taken effect. You can already see that there is fire on the mountain. And it's only the people in charge that seem not to be on the run. I mean, the Senate, the, 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 role, the role of the legislative is check and balances. Eh? So why can't they check the executive before the executive wrecks Nigeria? Because the, this policy does not make any sense. There has never been such an urgency to make new notes, especially when you have bungled the process so abysmally. Like there is no notes. Like I heard uh, Governor Rupai say that they, they said they only printed about uh, maybe 300 billion, um, uh, what they call, to replace, you know, like you printed 10% to replace what you watch, what you were trying to mop up. It doesn't make any sense. A lot of the illicit money are not being kept in cash. That is what history has shown. People who, are, people who have access to those kind of money know how to move it. It's the common man. I mean, Iyada is selling tomato, a perishable good. We don't have 24 hours electricity. The tomato will perish on a tray because she can't get new currency to buy. To, to, uh, people should, uh, for people to buy from her. The, the aboki that is selling onions, the onions will perish on its wheelbarrow because he can't see people with new currency to come and buy. We have full and earned men that are selling 400,000 naira worth of cow for 300,000 naira. And the president thinks everybody will be happy with that. 
we have destroyed the Nigerian economy with asinine policies, and we are now trying to destroy the Nigerian people by taking away the little money that they have and telling them we have the power to make them go broke. My, my 92-year-old grandmother in my village that works on a quadruped, you are trying to tell that woman who is, a, who is an educated woman, who is a teacher, who operates with cash. You are trying to tell my 92-year-old grandmother that the money she has, if she cannot work to whatever money exchange people and stand in queue with her bad back and bad knee, that you are going to devalue my 92-year-old grandmother. Is that what you are saying? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. That All is right. why we are going to court. All right. That is why we are going to court. And the law is clear. Anybody can go and read it. All right. That's a fine place to leave the conversation this morning. Dr. Marin Dotti Oludari, convener of the Social Rehabilitation Grace and Supportive Initiative. Thank you for your time on the program. Thank you very much, ma'am.